uh, this video is a short tutorial on how public key encryption works or basically public and private key encryption works so here's the outline of the video first I'll discuss a short introduction on where um, encryption happens in the real world then I'll discuss private key encryption followed by public key encryption and the algorithm behind public key encryption which is the RSA algorithm so application internet users who shop online who checks their emails and who checks their bank transactions online should have a secure connection between their um, web browser and uh, and any server that requires to send um, that requires the user to send sensitive information to the server um, in order for the server to notify um, the users that um, the server and the browser has a secure connection um, the server will send a certificate and once the browser um, acknowledges and recognizes this certificate a lock icon in the web browser usually appears in order to make sure that the connection is secure um, users can check their web browser uh, uh, the address bar in their web browser and if they see an HTTPS in the address bar that means that um, the server and the browser already has a secure connection so uh, before the 1970s people were using an encryption method that only uses one key and this one key is used for encrypting encryption and decryption um, to further explain this I'll give an example suppose Iron Man wants to send a message to the Incredible Hulk both Iron Man and the Incredible Hulk should share identical keys and before um, and to have this identical key a key exchange process should occur first before sending the encrypted message so Iron Man sends his key to the Incredible Hulk during this um, key exchange which for me is the most important um, process in um, data encryption a third party which is Loki in this instance in this example can intercept and hack the communication between Iron Man and the Incredible Hulk and if this happens and Iron Man has already sent a copy of his key to um, the Hulk. Loki can have his own um, copy of this of this said key. So when the Incredible Hulk finishes um, doing uh, creating his message, ah, uh, sorry, if Iron Man is already finished doing or creating his message and sends his message to the Incredible Hulk Loki can have a copy of this message and uh, he can decrypt the message because he has Iron Man's um, key to decrypt the cipher text um, this already carries too much risk and uh, because the private uh, because the key is is sent to anyone and is being transported to person A to person B and during this phase 
anyone can hack into the communication bridge communication bridge and get the the key of person of iron man and decrypt the message furthermore um for example if iron man wants to send uh, a message an encrypted message to every avenger member he should have um multiple keys unique keys and before sending the message he needs to send the key one by one to every avenger member managing keys is already burdensome for 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 iron man and it already um costs co uh, communication overhead since he needs to before sending the message he needs to send the keys one by one to every member so is there a better alternative for this um, encryption process so there is and this is the public key encryption the risk and cost involved in sending the key sparked the foundation of the public key encryption in the 1970s. Public key encryption is also known as the asymmetric key encryption because of the use of two, of two keys. And these are public and private keys. And these keys have opposite functions unlike in the private key encryption that uses only one key that has both has both. Um, functionalities <clears throat> now let's take a look at this diagram with the uh, example of Hulk and Iron Man once again for example Hulk wants to send a message this time to will will send a message to Iron Man before sending the message the Incredible Hulk will notify Iron Man and ask for Iron Man's public key. Iron Man will gladly oblige and send his public key to, in the, to the Incredible Hulk. The Incredible Hulk then um, um, binds his message with the public key and it is now encrypted using the public key of Iron Man. <clears throat> Once encryption is done, the Incredible Hulk will send back the public key along with this binded message to back to Iron Man. Iron Man will then use his private key to unlock the, me the encrypted message of the Incredible Hulk. For example, let's say Loki is again trying to decrypt the message of the Incredible Hulk. Loki has um, the public key of Iron Man and the message of the Incredible Hulk. Um, Loki will have a harder time in, uh, decrypting this message since he doesn't have the private key of Iron Man. And the private key um, wasn't in any way part of uh, in any exchange. In the key exchange, the private key is still in Iron Man's uh, possession. And during the message exchange, it is still in, pri uh, in Iron Man's um, possession. Even though Loki knows the public key, he will have a hard time finding out the value of the private key because of the power of prime factorization. The larger the prime number, the harder it is to find the prime factors, which will unlock the message that needs to be un uh, that needs to unlock the message. It could take years for Loki to solve the prime factors to find the private key because he doesn't know the five function, the phi function of the private key. So there. He still doesn't know how to open the, the message because he doesn't have the private key 
And even if he has the most powerful computers to compute and find the factors, the factors of the the message, uh, he will still have a hard time. 